Micro frontends are one of those ideas that sound perfectly reasonable on paper until you actually try to build something with them. Everyone buys into buzzwords like independent deployments, and team autonomy, but what you are actually doing is adding into your project complexity that will end up biting you in the ass. We all agree that developing large front-end projects can get messy quickly, so it's easy to buy into the idea that breaking things up will make life better. Ironically, backend developers are facing the same struggles with their monolith versus microservices endless debate, so it's only fitting web devs are copy-pasting the same architectural chaos into the browser. But this time around, the tooling is worse, technical decisions are made by script kitties, and everyone is duplicating hundreds of CSS lines left and right. The real problem is that most developers treat micro frontends as a technical solution, but at its core, it's really about human interaction, collaboration, and communication. That being said, I am also a developer with no social skills and a full disregard for communication, so I can't really help you with the human interaction bit. So in this video, we'll stick to the technical details and the best practices that actually matter when building micro frontends. The simplest way to implement them is also the oldest. Yes, the same iframes you were told to avoid way back in 2011 are still around. And they actually work, especially if you need hard isolation. It's ugly, but reliable, just like your mom. You get total sandboxing, zero dependency clashes, and a very clear boundary between apps. But you also get awful styling and awkward communication via post message. If you want something cleaner, web components are a better option. They let you create framework-agnostic custom elements you can drop into any front-end project. Thanks to the Shadow DOM, you don't have to worry about CSS leaks, and with custom events, communication is straightforward. They are native to the browser, require no build tools, and should have probably become the standard way we shared components years ago. On the downside, there's no built-in way to share state across components, and the dev experience is arguably worse compared to some of the more modern alternatives. But iframes and web components are just the low-level primitives. If you're building anything bigger than a to-do app, you'll probably need something like Single SPA, which markets itself as the micro front-end framework for serious apps. What it actually does is add a layer of JavaScript glue that figures out which app to mount, when to unmount it, and how to keep the whole thing running without tripping over itself. It supports multiple frameworks, independent deployments, and lazy loading, which sounds amazing until you realize you've just created a distributed system inside the browser, complete with all the coordination problems that come with it. Now, instead of a build pipeline, you've got five, instead of routing, you've got routing orchestration, and instead of bugs, you have cross-team incidents with finger-pointing and frustration. And this brings us to module federation. Introduced in Webpack 5, this is an architecture which actually delivers. Under the hood, it works by turning each app into both a host and a remote. A host can dynamically load chunks of code from a remote app at runtime, and the remote can expose specific modules or components to be consumed. All of this is handled by Webpack during the build process, using a configuration that maps out which modules are exposed and where they can be fetched from. What makes it work is a runtime JavaScript manifest that knows how to resolve and load remote modules. Instead of bundling everything together up front, module federation defers some dependencies to be loaded when needed. What's even more interesting is that thanks to ES modules in the browser, we might be close to actually ditching bundlers altogether, at least in theory. Modern browsers now support native import statements, even for modules hosted on completely different domains. That means, in some cases, you can load a remote component with a plain old import call without any bundlers or layers of abstractions. But when it comes to micro front-end architecture options, I for one have a clear preference. Astro started as a static site builder that somehow ended up doing micro front-ends better than most of the tools that were actually designed for it. Its island architecture, combined with the available UI integrations, makes it really easy to build small, self-contained pieces of UI that load exactly when they're needed and do absolutely nothing when they're not. Let me know in the comments if you are interested in a deep dive into any of these frameworks, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and until next time, thank you for watching.